Hey friends, we're kicking off a new series of videos today we're calling House Calls. And our hope in doing so is that we can provide these few minute clips that for those of us who find ourselves maybe in homes stuck inside with people 24 seven that we're not used to and that maybe some tensions have started to get amped up a little bit or some frustrations. Um, our hope is that we can maybe just provide a little bit of help. We can share some stories, some insights, some things that we've learned along the way to just help us navigate those relationships better. And our hope is, is that they'll be helpful. And maybe if they're helpful to you, maybe they'll also be helpful to someone else and you'd want to share it and pass it along to them. But one of the things that I'm sure we're going to address uh, even in upcoming weeks in all sorts of different ways is this issue of conflict. One of the things I tell people often is that I never really get concerned when I see couples having what I would consider normal conflict, because I think conflict is healthy and it's good and it's important for a relationship. Where I start to get concerned most of the time is when I don't see any conflict at all. Because when you don't see any conflict at all, that usually means, from my experience, one of two things is true. Either one, you have two people who don't care very much about the relationship. There's two really boring people or they're just not passionate about each other or passionate about um, yeah, any part of their relationship. Or two, the other thing that you find is that you have one person who's kind of waved the white flag. One person who's just given up and determined, you know what, it doesn't matter what I say, it doesn't matter what I think, if I try to share my perspective, it's just gonna get turned around, twisted, turned on me, I'm gonna be made to feel dumb, I'm gonna be made to feel stupid, I'm gonna be made to feel like my opinion doesn't really matter. And so they've just given up. Because usually in relationships, not all the time, but usually you have one person who maybe is better at words than the other, one person who can talk faster, who has a bigger vocabulary, who can argue better, who's pretty gifted at arguing and debating, and they're, they're pretty good at shutting the other person down if they want to. And early on in my own marriage, that was the case, where I remember real clearly one day, my wife and I, we were at the kitchen counter. This is probably, we've been married now almost a little over 22 years. So this was around year three, year four. And I don't remember what the conflict was about, but something my wife said really struck me where she said, you know what? We were in the middle of some conflict and she's like, Jonathan, it doesn't really matter what I say. It doesn't really matter at all what I say because you're just gonna twist it around. You're gonna make me feel like it was my fault that I'm stupid and you're gonna talk circles around me. And so I've just given up. It just doesn't even matter. And you know what? She was 100% right. And it was a huge wake up call for me because I started to realize that I had done exactly that. I'm a pretty competitive person, so I like to win. And I'd become really good at that. And I'd become really good at arguing. My wife could say something, and even if her argument made sense, I could twist it around and make it be my argument and make her feel like it was my idea. And I, it was just, it was gross. And I could be, because partly too, I talk and write for a living. And so I just, I could really present a pretty convincing argument and that could pretty easily shut people down. And to make it worse, I was also the pastor. So I carried this sense of spiritual or moral superiority by the things that I was saying, or that my perspective was somehow better or more godly. And you stack all those things on top of one another. And eventually my wife just gave up. And she's like, you know, it doesn't even really matter what I say. It doesn't matter what my perspective is because you'll just twist it around and you'll make me feel stupid. And so it's just better that I don't say anything. And so I had to learn really quickly that I was making it very unsafe for my wife in our home. Not physically unsafe, but just it was unsafe for her 
to share her opinion. It was unsafe for her to share her perspective, to be honest about how she was feeling and what she was going through. And I had to accept the fact that I had done that. By my words and by my actions, I had made it unsafe for her. And so I had to take a long season of time and as the one who was better and stronger with words to really limit myself, to put myself in a position where, okay, I'm going to listen a whole lot more than I'm going to talk. Even if I think I'm all right, even if I think I have a better argument, I need to stop talking and I need to just focus on how do I make it safe for my wife to be heard because I had lost that trust. I had created an unsafe environment for her to be heard. And even in how we would sit together, when we would talk, there'd be times where maybe I would be standing up and she would be sitting down on a stool. And it was just even communicating with my presence, just being standing taller than she was. Oh, this could be this kind of intimidating thing. And so I needed to even physically just get myself lower than she was for a long time. And I also need to do stuff where I would just sometimes hold her hand while we were in the middle of a conflict. And that may sound silly, but I needed something physically to remind myself that this is a woman that I vowed to love and honor and cherish, that I'm not at war with her. Our ideas may be at war and our perspectives may be at war. Our opinions may be at war and they can battle with each other all day long, but I'm not at war with her. And so I needed to do things that reminded me of that in the middle of conflict. Because the biggest thing was I had created an unsafe environment for my wife to be honest about how she was feeling, her perspectives, what she was going through, and I needed to change that. And so here's my hope for you, is that you might be bold enough to ask that question to people in your life, in your home. Do you feel like it's safe for you to share your opinion? Do you feel like it's safe for you to be honest about your experiences and what you're going through? That you might have the courage to ask that question. Now, here's the thing. You have to be prepared for the answer. And if that answer is, it doesn't feel safe, you can't, that's your moment. You can't overreact. You can't explode. You can't get mad. You can't get angry. This is about giving you intel about yourself. This is about you and the environment you're creating. So, you need to be willing to ask that question. Do I make it safe for you? Either way, in any relationship, that's important. Even to ask kids, some of you have kids in your home and as they get to be teenagers, you need to be able to ask them, hey, do you feel like it's safe for you to express yourself? Do you feel like it's safe for you to be honest and that you let them speak and you let them be honest with you and you prepare yourself to hear whatever that is and then take some inventory, take some time, take some breath, listen, and then try to figure out how do I help create a safe environment for the people that I'm around so that they can be heard. Hope that's helpful. Take care.